It was French scientist and theologian Pierre Teilhard de Chardin who said, we are not physical beings having spiritual experiences. We are spiritual beings having physical experiences. That sentiment that he captured in that simple poetic quote conveys a wisdom that's part of each great tradition throughout the world, that who human beings are fundamentally is something deeply spiritual, that we have souls, that we have spirits, that there is an inner light, that there is an inner something that we are not sure quite how to capture, but that it is the source of what it means to be human. And that's expressed through our bodies, through our minds, through our feelings and emotions, but that who we are is fundamentally spiritual. While that's a famous quote, while it's very helpful and insightful, I actually prefer the way Sufi master Hafiz expressed it translated by Daniel Ladinsky in his collection of Hafiz's poetry, The Cup. Hafiz simply says, you are God in drag. Today I want to talk about that. You are God in drag. And as I talk about that, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. You know, we've grown up in cultures that have taught us that who we are is inadequate, that there's something fundamentally wrong with us. This understanding, of course, was nurtured in Christianity through doctrines like original sin that says that who we are from birth are original sinners, that there's this stain or spot that's on our soul. And that was articulated even more aggressively by the reform theologians who later said who people are is fundamentally depraved that there isn't anything good about us. Wow, that's really a shocking statement. And it's not just Western theology that implies this inadequacy that says that there's something wrong with us, that there's something missing. It's more subtle in the East, but in the East, there is this sense of our being unenlightened beings and that we have to come to enlightenment, that who we are in and of ourselves is unenlightened. All of this gets reinforced within our consumeristic culture that conveys that we aren't good enough unless we have the latest thing, unless we have the latest phone, unless we drive the latest car, unless we're, we're wearing clothes of a certain style, unless we have this or that or the other thing, we're just not making it. So we have to have an image or, con or, or things. And these, this image or these things really establish our worth. And all of that diminishes who we are. All of that says we are not good enough. All of that says that there is something inadequate about us. Popular spiritual writer Matthew Fox tried to come at this in the 1980s in his book, Original Blessing. Fox wanted to combat this idea that there was something wrong with us fundamentally. And in doing so, he, he coined this term original blessing as a counterposition to original sin. And he looked at the mythology of the Judeo-Christian tradition to see how stories really convey this sense of original blessing. And, and looking at the Hebrew scriptures in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, there are two creation stories, both of which convey our worth and our goodness. The first is the probably most commonly recognized creation story in the Judeo-Christian tradition, the creation that happens over a series of days. And in each day, God says, this thing that was created is good. And at the end, when humanity is created, God says, it's very good. This story is meant to convey that there's a fundamental goodness about every aspect of life and that that's true with human beings too, 
that we are very good just by being who we are. Similarly, the second story of creation is the story where God forms the first human beings out of clay and breathes into them God's own life, and in doing so imparts divine life, putting something divine in human being. And the story conveys that we are made in the image and likeness of God. In other words, there's that divine breath within us, that that's the source of our life. You see, the tradition begins with this statement of our profound goodness of our profound blessing and invites us to grow from there. Yes, there are lots of things, lots of junk that gets put between that inner beauty that's who we are as human beings. And our growth psychologically and spiritually is about clearing that stuff out, getting rid of that stuff that prevents us from being the beautiful souls we were created to be. I think that Hafiz really captures this very well in a very short poem that presents us with an image that's very striking and maybe will help jar you into rethinking who you are at heart. Hafiz, as translated by Ladinsky, says, you are a divine elephant with amnesia trying to live in an ant hole. Sweetheart, oh sweetheart, you are God in drag. Hafiz is saying, who we are, are these huge divine beings, divine elephants, but we forgot that. We're, we have amnesia, we're not aware of that. And so we try to live these small lives in this ant hole, we try to constrict ourselves and be less than who we are. And we need to realize that who we are fundamentally is God in drag, God in this costume. Or as Teilhard de Chardin said, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Perhaps part of your growth and process and working to reclaiming that essence of who you are will include spiritual direction or therapy. And I encourage you to pursue those tools. And if you want to talk about spiritual direction, be sure to reach out to me. But above all, remember, you are God in drag. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, share it with others, leave me some comments, and know that I really appreciate your time watching these videos on spirituality beyond borders. Have a great day.